Santiago de Compostela, the spiritual home of Spain. Pilgrims have been coming here for over a thousand years. Now the cathedral is undergoing the most ambitious restoration ever. From a giant incense burner to priceless statues and crumbling stonework. Not only do they have to prepare for a special feast day in July, but an historic visit from the Pope himself. Can they really complete the facelift in just 10 months? In the northwest of Spain, so the story goes, a hermit followed lights in the sky to where Jesus' disciple, James, was buried. The cathedral built on this spot now hosts over two and a half million visitors a year. In this special holy year, at least 10 million visitors are expected, including the king and queen of Spain. And for the first time in the cathedral's history, the pope is coming especially to celebrate Holy Year Mass. The pressure is on to get huge swathes of restoration completed in time. At the heart of the restoration, critical repairs to the stonework. Decades of deterioration have taken their toll. The cathedral is crumbling. And architect Javier Alonso's job is to stop the cathedral from falling apart. Presenta diferentes patologías, suciedad orgánica de contaminación, sales también en la piedra, roturas por diversas causas. Se hará eh, será una limpieza eh, superficial, ya que el Papa va a entrar por aquí para que nos encuentre con esta imagen, y la retirada de los fragmentos de piedra que son peligrosos, que podrían caer, ¿no? están fisurados. To prepare for the Pope's tour, other critical works must be carried out to the entranceway, the vaults, and the communion chapel. But it's the Portico della Gloria, the cathedral's masterpiece, which is in most need of attention. Here, a team of conservation specialists led by Concha Thirajano is carrying out an extraordinary three million euro restoration to preserve this medieval treasure. Orchestrating everything is Dean Jose Maria Diaz. As well as conducting several masses a day, he must coordinate the entire restoration project. Es la restauración más importante que se ha llevado a cabo nunca en Galicia. Y esta restauración que era muy urgente por las humedades y por el deterioro. But first on the Dean's list of vital repairs is the cathedral's prized incense burner the Botafumero. Watching this 80 kilo metal giant swinging over the heads of the congregation is the highlight of any pilgrim's visit to the cathedral. It takes eight tirabelleros, or rope pullers, to set the Botafumero off in a carefully choreographed ballet. But there's a problem. The nylon rope installed three years ago is too heavy and is not allowing it to swing properly. So, 20 meters up in the rafters, workers are installing a new, specially woven hemp rope. The man in charge is Armando Raposo. He's been working at the cathedral for 60 years and has been head of maintenance for over half a century. He's also the head tirabellero, the chief rope puller. Es el jefe anterior a mí, Jesús García Villar. Este es un obrero de aquí de Jesús. Este es un hermano mío que ya se murió también. Es decir, este se murió, este se murió y este se murió. Y este también. Quedo yo solo. En aquella época quedo yo solo. The best cord that I knew was the cord of cord. But those cord of cord were made by hand. 
aquí tienen ahora, pues ya he cambiado, una, desde que estoy aquí, unas cinco cuerdas. Y así seguimos. The team must also restore the 400-year-old pulley system. Mass cannot be performed while they're working up in the church roof, so they have just two days to get the Botafumero's swing back. In three weeks, the king and queen of Spain will be coming here to celebrate the feast day of St. James. And then, of course, there's the Pope himself. After watching the Botafumero in action, the Pope will make a special detour to see the Portico de la Gloria. This is the cathedral's crowning masterpiece. It represents the gateway to God and the final judgment. Ahí el mensaje del pórtico es la Jerusalén celeste, donde Cristo nos espera con los brazos abiertos. De ahí los tres arcos. ¿eh? Hay un arco central que es la Jerusalén celeste y dos arcos laterales. El arco de la izquierda es como el alfa, el verbo de Dios entre Adán y Eva y figuras del Antiguo Testamento. Al otro lado es Omega, siempre es en Omega, es el juicio universal. Tiene como centro de la clave el rostro de Cristo y el arcángel San Miguel. Begun in the late 12th century, this stunning three-tiered portico took 20 years to complete. It's considered the greatest example of Romanesque sculpture in the whole of Spain. Now crumbling, the dean has given it priority amongst the cathedral's urgent repairs. Jose Maria Diaz first came to Compostela in 1982. Four years ago, he was elected dean through a secret vote. But now his term is about to come to an end, and he's spending his final year navigating a minefield of bureaucracy. Ha habido muchísimas dificultades, los procedimientos administrativos, etcétera y tal. Nos hemos encontrado con muchas demoras, muchos entorpecimientos, muchos permisos legales que tardan en llegar la, la empresa constructora o la empresa restauradora. And while the dean struggles to get sign-off to fix a crumbling cathedral, in the portico, the specialist restorers have begun the first phase of their project. They must map the full extent of the damage to this religious treasure, and they have just 10 months to complete their work. The scaffolding has to come down in time for the papal visit in November. Lead restorer Concha Thirajano is in charge of the team. restauración bastante complicada los biólogos, los químicos, los físicos cada uno, digamos que analiza saca sus propias sus conclusiones de su parte de trabajo, todo eso se plasma en un documento que es el proyecto de intervención But with the project only just green lit there's already a problem Rumors are circulating that the Galician government now wants the scaffolding dismantled four months earlier than planned. They now want it down in time for the arrival of the king and queen of Spain in July this would give them just nine months to complete their work. Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. Ambitious restorations are underway for a royal visit in July and the Pope's Mass in November. These will mark the long anticipated Holy Year celebrations, which only happen when St. James' feast day falls on a Sunday. Beneath the cathedral in the crypt is a silver casket said to contain the relics of St. James, whose tomb was discovered here over a thousand years ago. Aquí lo primero fue la catedral y de la catedral nació la ciudad. El sepulcro de San Diego fue, fue descubierto hacia el año 830. Se hizo una primera iglesia, de la catedral nació la ciudad de Santiago de Compostela. With the spot where the cathedral now rests identified as the burial ground of St. James, a small Galician outpost was quickly transformed into a holy city. It was one that would rival Rome and even the Holy Land as a major pilgrimage destination for Christians. Over the centuries, it's been built over, under, in, and on top of. Today, it's dominated by showy, largely baroque sculpture, 
which covers 23,000 square meters. With an internal space of 200,000 cubic meters, it's crammed inside and out with ornate sculptures. Here, saints, sinners, the damned, and the divine are all frozen in time. At the center is St. James, the patron saint of Spain. And his feast day has been celebrated every 25th of July for the past 900 years. But the cathedral will only last another 900 years if architect Javier Alonso gets permission from the government to carry out urgent repairs to the facade. In the cathedral library, he runs through his master plan. He's compiled this 2,458-page document over four years. It details all the problems in every crevice, crack, and corner of the cathedral. Los trabajos eh, de estudios documentales, este es el más importante que he desarrollado. Ha sido casi cinco años de trabajo, casi constantes. And thanks to the dictatorship of General Franco in the 20th century, Javier has his work cut out for him. During those dark years, Spain closed its doors to international architects, craftsmen, materials and ideas. The 1960s and 70s were a particularly low point. En general, todos los encintados de esta fachada de la Torre Reloj, pero de la mayor parte de la catedral, eh, son de los años eh, 60, 70, por ahí, cuando era la costumbre hacerlo todo con cemento. Entonces, es uno de los problemas añadidos que generan sus sales. ¿sí? Hoy en día, como un error, un error muy, muy grave. ¿no? Unlike traditional limestone, modern cement generates salts which leak over time, causing ruptures. It's a mistake that will not be repeated. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. In another part of the cathedral, clambering over the Botafumero's pulley system 20 meters above the floor of the cathedral is the team of engineers assigned to find that perfect swing. In addition to servicing the Botafumero's mechanism, they're also installing the specially woven hemp rope, as head of maintenance Armando proudly explains. Estas son algunas. Estas son las que yo le decía. Esta fue la que quité. Ahora la última. Y esta fue la que puse ahora, ¿no? Es otro otro material, mucho más flexible. Esta no. In its 800-year history, Bodo Fumero has come crashing down at least five times. The most famous occasion was during the visit of Catherine of Aragon in the holy year of 1501, when it flew out of the cathedral window. The team is praying that this won't happen under their tenure. After some much-needed greasing, they're ready to try out the new rope. They watch nervously as their efforts are put to the test. La cuerda rígida de nylon y fibra nunca subía a su sitio. Es decir, como la cuerda pesaba mucho más, era mucho más gruesa, era mucho más rígida, como le estoy diciendo, y entonces pesaba, pesa más que el botafumero. Por lo tanto, tiramos, tiramos, tiramos y no subía, quedaba a las alturas de la galería, porque la cuerda, en vez de dejarlo subir, lo atraía para abajo. But is the newly installed hemp rope any better? With 
With the Botafumero back in action and ready for next month's Royal Mass, the team is thrilled with the results. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Portico de la Gloria, the race to collect all the information the restorers need is well underway. Concha has worked on monuments including the Cathedral of Seville and the Alhambra Palace, but now she's facing the most complex challenge of her career. She has to coordinate a number of specialist teams. Together, they must work out what's caused the damage to the portico, when it happened, and how to repair it. Eh, cuáles son los factores que han provocado el daño. Una vez que, que eso, digamos, lo tienes identificado, hay que buscar las soluciones. Eso es lo complicado, digamos, lo comprometido, donde puedes, donde puedes equivocar. Under Concha's wing is Dino, coordinator for the entire project. El primer elemento, para capir que el pórtico había tenido problemas de carácter estructural, se ve de propio de este arco. Si ve de aquí, c'è questa lesione che non ha polvere, per cui eh, è una lesione che si è eh, realizzata in questi ultimi tempi. Evidentemente c'è del movimento. In order to measure the movement, a series of sensors have been placed on the portico. These transmit data to the lab via a computer. At the portico's base station on the second floor, specialist restorer Maria monitors the environmental conditions. Esto, nosotros hacemos un registro de insolación. En qué zonas, en concreto, eh, incide el sol sobre las esculturas? Y normalmente coincide en las zonas que se encuentran en peor estado con las que más tiempo reciben el sol. The team has just received bad news. Orders have come from the government to take the scaffolding down in time for the royal visit. This gives them only 10 days to finish their main tests. The news has come as a blow to the dean, who's not impressed. Pues hubo dudas de si desmontar todo el andamio o parte de él. Hemos preferido pues no desmontarlo todo. It's been decided that most of the portico scaffold will come down but not all of it. Se desmonta todo, se produce la impresión de que se interrumpe la restauración. Y por otro lado, también es importante que todo el mundo tenga constancia de que se está llevando a cabo una restauración importante. La Capilla Sistina durante varios años se llevó a cabo con andamios la restauración. Si se hubiera muerto el Papa, pues no se hubieran quitado los andamios. En Roma saben más de andamios que en ningún otro sitio. And as plans for the removal of the scaffolding on the inside are looming, scaffolding on the outside is erected with breathtaking speed. An army of workers has arrived on site for the festival preparations and are carrying out their work like a military operation. Me llamo Oscar. Me llamo Javier. Estamos montando una estructura después se va a cubrir con una réplica de lo que es la entrada de la catedral. O sea, tú lo vas a ver desde fuera y vas a pensar que estás viendo la catedral. No se ve la estructura. The pair are mounting 10 tons of scaffolding on the main facade of the cathedral. La cara de la cara desviada nos rompe toda la fachada. Cabo una puerta, el auto. This will be covered by a false facade loaded with hundreds of fireworks. The fake facade of the cathedral will then seem to burn. Climbing over the rooftops of the cathedral is Rafael Yagas and his pyrotechnics experts. Over the course of this week, they'll set up the fireworks display for the eve of St. James Day. These will be launched from the ground and the roof of the cathedral itself. Estamos montando aquí lo que es fuego de candela romana, efectos, eh, simulacro de incendios y iluminaremos toda la torre 
Cada tubito de ese lleva muchos artefactos dentro, ¿vale? Entonces, eh, lo que ves ahora no, está, no es todo, no está todo colocado. Pues exactamente no te lo sé decir cuánto hay, pero hay bastante, ¿eh? hay mucho. Hay mucho. Esto, esto no es nada para lo que va a haber mañana. Scaling the rooftops armed with explosives is a dangerous mission, but protecting the cathedral from danger is paramount. One false move could cause irreparable damage to the medieval monument. At Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain, restorers, engineers and events coordinators are working to prepare the cathedral for two VIP visits. The Pope is due in November to celebrate the Holy Year. And on the 25th of July, just five days from now, the King and Queen of Spain will honor St. James. But for Javier, the cathedral's architectural consultant, time is running out, as the Galician government still hasn't greenlit any of his projects. Estamos en el Triforio. Se van a restaurar el revestimiento de las bóvedas y los arcos fajones, también con motivo de la visita papal. The vaults are unlikely to be ready in time for the Pope's visit. And in the clock tower, they only have time for basic safety measures. La torre simplemente sería retirar aquellas piedras que puedan caer. Por una oxidación exagerada, fragmenta las piedras, algunas ya han caído y otras están a punto de caer. Javier's task is not an easy one. Priority has been given to places that the Pope will visit. The Azerbaijiria facade, the vaults, and the communion chapel. Para antes de la visita del Papa, entonces se cometerá como actuaciones más, más rápidas, la limpieza hasta la altura de la cornisa de los paramentos y la restauración, que ahora ya los han sacado de aquí, de las esculturas de madera que ocupaban esas cuatro hornacinas. But even with this rapidly approaching event, these works have been paralyzed as the cathedral awaits the government's permission. And ahead of the Pope's visit, the cathedral must welcome Spain's king and queen in just two days' time. As evening descends, the cathedral becomes a hub of activity. Lighting is being installed for the royal arrival. Antonio, the night watchman, does his daily winding inside the clock tower. And Joaquin practices the piece he's preparing for the king and queen. Having been the cathedral's organist for five years, he's become an expert in its dulcet tones. Esto ya suena bastante, ¿eh? Todo el órgano sería esto, pero esto es una locura. Esto sería una auténtica locura. En todo caso, se podría llegar a este sonido al final de la tocata. Pero no para empezar. Para empezar, esto, esto debe ser mucho más. La sensación es de gravedad. Le produce la sensación de que se va a caer el templo. Ahora es mucho, pero después no es nada. Después no... Cuando hay mil, mil quinientas personas en la catedral, esto parece que no suena. Te sientes muy pequeño tocando esto. Joaquín will play a toccata by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's a score that holds personal significance for him. En un órgano en el que asistí cuando tenía 13 años al concierto de inauguración de ese instrumento de la mano de mi padre, sin saber, era el primer gran concierto de mi vida al que yo asistía como oyente, sin saber ni por asomo que acabaría tocando eh, en una 
misa del 25 de julio y con los reyes de España, la obra que abrió ese concierto. Es casi un... cerrar un gigantesco círculo con mi infancia. Early next morning, pyrotechnic experts are once again scaling the rooftops and towers. They're wiring 5,000 triggers for the fireworks. These will be used to set off 25,000 fireworks during the half-hour show. The fireworks must be placed carefully so they don't damage the stonework. Lo más, esto, lo más difícil es, es eh, arriba la catedral, porque hay que poner todo el fuego a la parte de fuera de la catedral, entonces ahí... El personal que esté tiene que estar sujeto con arneses y, y es mucho peligro. Meanwhile, back down in the portico, it's the final day before the scaffolding is brought down ahead of the royal visit. Concha and her team are now confident they've collected the data required for this stage of the project. Digamos que hemos hecho la fase de, de recogida de información. Ahora viene. The thermal and humidity machines will continue to take readings throughout the rest of the year, transmitting them in real time to the labs in Italy. The first phase of the project has been a success, but the cathedral has become a second home to them. It's an emotional event. No deja de ser una obra muy importante, no solo a nivel español, sino a nivel mundial, del románico. Y para un restaurador es como lo más. Y si encima eres de aquí lo has visto desde pequeño, pues, pues es increíble. En el restaurante no se me ha ido, ya hemos finido. Porque hay un diálogo continuo entre la ópera y la persona. Y entonces es como abrir un, un, un cassetto de fotografías o de joyelli donde hay cosas maravillosas. Y entonces, man mano, le, le guardi, le scopri. Y entonces, hay esta maravillosa sensación de vivir en el tiempo. Cioè, de entrar en un espacio, en un espacio, en un tiempo, ormai but the team must still wait 13 long weeks for the results of their tests to start pouring in. At the end of the day, the scaffolding team are brought in and architect Javier Alonso oversees the dismantling. The Portico de la Gloria is like a lesson of theology or of catechism for all the pilgrims who came. Solo el 10% de Europa sabía leer y por tanto ni había por dónde leer cuando no había la imprenta, quién poseía un códice, etc. Era privilegio de muy pocos, pero por eso la, las catedrales era, y los monasterios eran la Biblia de los pobres, ¿eh? en los capiteles, en los murales, en los frescos, en las esculturas, las lecciones bíblicas y las lecciones de catecismo. Por eso digo que el Pórtico de la Gloria es una lección inicial de, de catecismo para los peregrinos que llegan. With the unsightly scaffolding now out of the way, the cathedral is ready for its first VIP event tomorrow. All eyes are on Rafael Yagas and the pyrotechnic team. But the one thing they're all praying for is that the weather will hold up. Because in Galicia, when it rains, it pours. The eve of St. James Day. Celebrations at the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela will begin in less than six hours. In a football field nearby, pyrotechnic experts are making final checks. Once set up, a computer tests the triggers. Tensions are high and patience is wearing thin. Mira 62 por aquí. Mira 62 9 y se ha soltado el inflamador o le hemos pegado un tirón. Este módulo de aquí, el de los el de al lado de los 15. Ese 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 ese. Ábrelo, ábrelo. 
¿Eh? A ver, quítate, Franky. Pues ahora falla el 7. A ver qué has hecho. Quítate que lo pruebo otra vez. Tío. A ver, quita. Vale, el 7 viene, el 9 no. Outside the cathedral, the festivities are in full swing, with street performers, musicians and artists all arriving for the celebrations. In the Obradoiro Square, visitors from all over the globe have gathered in their thousands to secure their place for tonight's spectacle. The final checks are carried out on the fireworks. With all systems now online, Rafael Yagas and his teams have met their deadline and are in high spirits, confident that it will be an unforgettable night for all the right reasons. 11.30 p.m., the weather has held up with clear skies forecast. Over 100,000 people have flooded Obradoiro Square for front row seats. 40,000 watts of music fill the air. 100,000 watts of lights illuminate the cathedral and 25,000 fireworks are set off with the turn of a key. For Rafael Yagas and his team, it's a brilliant success. Lighting fires to welcome the feast day of St. James is nothing new. It's an annual ritual that's unlikely to be lost as long as the cathedral remains standing. Next morning, Obradoiro Square is filled with crowds eager to catch a glimpse of the King and Queen as they make their way to the cathedral for the most important annual mass. It's the feast day of St. James. For the locals, it's a double celebration as it's also Galicia Day. Politicians, dignitaries and royalty have converged on the square to join the church in an appeal for peace and prosperity. Once inside, the king makes the offering to the apostle. Apostle Santiago, patron de España, quiero pedirte una vez más para España y para todos los españoles. Te ruego nos ayudes a superar las dificultades que afecten a nuestra vida colectiva. The royal visit has been a success. Having just received a major dose of celebrity for the first half of the year, plans are now being put into fifth gear for the second dose. The Pope is coming in just four months' time, and the eyes of the world will turn to Santiago. Finally, permission is through to restore the facade. But now Javier must wait for the government to appoint a contracting company. The project of the restoration integral is approved, but there is no time to execute it before the coming of the Pope. Entonces lo que sí se hará eh, será una limpieza eh, superficial. Es una pena que todo esto no pueda estar hecho antes porque es una fachada importante y, y pide ser arreglada. Pero al mismo tiempo es también una alegría que por fin haya un proyecto y haya financiación para ejecutar todas sus restauraciones. Inside the Communion Chapel, another restoration project has been approved. 
Specialist restorer Rossio Dominek has arrived on site to assess the damage. Okay, these are the sculptures that we have to restore. And they are in a very, very bad state. The humidity from the chapel has made them very soft and they have been attacked by the woodworm. So there are many parts missing, like this hand from San Ambrosio, it's here. As you can see, came off. We have to make a treatment with an acrylic product that we inject in the wood, so it becomes harder with the time. You have to repeat the treatment like four or five times until it's completely restored the strength of the wood. With the Pope's arrival in just 16 weeks, she's got her work cut out for her. It's very important. He's going to come and pray here. So it has to be everything shiny and brilliant and beautiful. And we have to work as much time as we need. And that can be morning, afternoon, and I think at night <laughs> to, to, to make it happen. And as Rossio prepares herself for some late nights, Javier's stone conservation project is about to take a new twist. Surveyor Duncan Lees has arrived to gather vital data on the Torre del Reloj, the cathedral's clock tower. Unfortunately, there's just one small problem. The weather. In order to determine any structural problems with the clock tower, Duncan is using a laser measurement system to gather the data from the crumbling building. It's far from ideal, the weather, but we've been out in worse. Uh, we're relatively protected here from the, from the rain. If the wind isn't too strong, we should be OK. The scanner itself is waterproof and, and safe. It's just that the rain causes the laser to refract and deflect, and therefore um, you get a lot of noise in the data, as we call it, so a kind of a fuzz of extra points. The scanner's certainly happier in the rain than I am, that's for sure. Buenos dias, Javier. Hola. Javier is keen to know how much the clock tower has subsided. He also wants to get a full 3D map of all the stonework. The weather will have to be nicer <laughs> for us to be able to tell. It's impossible. Yeah. It would be worse. Yeah, today. I think so. <laughs> After just one setup, the wind has picked up. There's a real danger that the scanner will blow over or even off the top of the tower. Duncan decides to relocate and pray that the storm passes before gathering any more data. Away from the wind, inside the main chapel, scaffolding is being erected up to the ceiling. This will enable a quick makeover for the vaults. A layer of plaster is being stripped away and painted over. But this has revealed an underlying problem. While Javier gets to grips with the crumbling walls, lead restorer Rossio begins her diagnosis of the statues. Sometimes it's like in a TV show house, they, they have like very strange diseases. They have like 
strange things on them, like kids paint, we found boat paint on them too. People sometimes do it with their best intention, but it's, they have bad ideas. In order to operate on her patients, she must first identify the correct solvent to treat the surface of the statues. It doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't come off either. I'm gonna try with another thing. <laughs> Finally. And this is the rear color without the varnish. You can see it's here. It doesn't seem much, but it makes a difference. Restoration is a very slow process always. You need a lot of patience <laughs> to work in this. Unfortunately for Rossio, the delay with permissions means she doesn't have a lot of time, just four weeks. And while Rossio gets to grips with disintegrating statues, her colleagues also have less than a month to give the communion chapel altar a complete facelift. Meanwhile, in the clock tower, better weather means that Duncan is finally making headway. What has become glaringly obvious in the few days that we've been working here is, um, is the lack of accurate measurement information that Javier can use within the conservation process. And he needs that information in a, in a third dimension. He needs to see sections and elevations and three-dimensional space. But with all this progress, Javier still has a big problem. The government still hasn't appointed a company to clean the Azabacheria facade, the entranceway the Pope is due to pass through in just three weeks' time. Late October. With the Pope's visit looming, tension is mounting at Santiago de Compostela as workers race round the clock to prepare the cathedral. With just 12 days to go, Javier finally gets permission to start cleaning the Azabacheria facade, where the Pope will enter the cathedral. In double quick time, their cherry picker is in situ and work has started. And as cleaning work on the facade speeds up, workers in the vaults have found a solution to their problem. But Javier's night is not over yet. There's one more vault that needs attention. But in order to reach it, the team must move the massive chandelier hanging in the main transept. So they call in head of maintenance, Armando. Y el peligro que lleva el mover esa lámpara. Esa lámpara tiene 3000 piezas de cristal de roca y tiene 3 metros de diámetro por 5 de alto. Y entonces cualquier movimiento que tenga un poco raro puede moverse y romper las, los brazos y hacer un estropicio en la lámpara.
After a long night, the team successfully maneuver the priceless chandelier out of the way. The next morning, Javier meets Duncan to get the results he's been waiting for, the scan measurements of the clock tower. You can see that all of the stones yeah. are clear. You can see all of the joints in the mm. stonework here. And where, the, where there's gaps in the scan data, it's because there's gaps in the stonework as well. Incredible. Genius. For the very first time, Javier has accurate measurements for the clock tower, 3D plans that are vital before commencing his urgent restoration project. But crucially, the scan reveals that the tower has subsided. The total tilt is 121 millimeters. Javier will have to keep an eye on this over the coming years. By now, all the studies of this tower have been only uh, historical or statistical studies. In fact, by now, it's the first time that it's a, a drawing mm. of this part of the building. It's the day before the Pope's visit. And in the communion chapel, the altar is freshly gilded and ready for the statues that Rossio has painstakingly restored to be brought home. With the saints safely restored to their pedestals, the dean could not be happier. Estamos muy contentos. Esta empresa de la restauración ha llevado a cabo una obra admirable y de esta manera, pues, cuando el Papa entre aquí y se encontrará con una capilla digna y bellamente restaurada con esta ocasión. The fresh makeover for the communion chapel, the vaults, and the azabacheria facade has renewed Javier's hope for the cathedral's restoration. La zabacheria es un lavado de cara, pero ahora se va a iniciar la restauración a fondo. Estamos encantados de esta oportunidad y esperamos estar a la altura del reto que que supone. Outside the cathedral, there's a buzz of activity. The next morning, on Obradoiro Square, the stage has been set for mass. and people have converged from around the world to support the Pope on his first visit to Santiago. For the Dean, for Javier, and for the rest of the team, it's another job successfully completed, at least for this year. The cathedral is an obra maestra from many points of view. We're comprometed to add to the spirit la gente que ha construido, que ha ido construyendo la catedral a lo largo del tiempo. For Rocio, it's the job of a lifetime. For a restorer, it's like the best thing you can do. This work is like our biggest job to this day, and we're really happy about that. For Armando, it's a proud moment. Llevo aquí unos cincuenta y pico de años. Y todos estamos encantados. ¿Dónde mejor se va a estar que en el medio de un cabildo de la Catedral de Santiago? En ningún sitio, me parece. For José María, 
the papal visit is the high point of his tenure as dean of the cathedral. La venida del Papa a un lugar católico como esto consagra su importancia y consagra su espiritualidad. Estoy convencido de que marca, diríamos con letras de oro, el Año Santo de 2010. Es buen final.